read you a few lines out of the book of Revelation as a call to worship. Right towards the end of the book of Revelation, some of the last words in the Bible are these. Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city. Fairly amazing, isn't it? Because we start off in the first part of the Bible with the tree of life being forbidden to man because he offended God. Right at the end of the Bible, now we have the tree of life. Why? Because of the one who is the first and the last, Jesus, the great Saviour and Messiah. I think those are a very good reasons to praise him this morning and we are going to sing praise to him. Just one little comment I should make. There may have been a bit of a misprint in your handout. All the hymns this morning are from this book, the Rejoice Hymnal. Yeah. So if you need just to get the other hymn, the words are going to be different in the other one. So I'll just take a few seconds for those who want to change their book to Rejoice. We're all out of Rejoice. And the first of our hymns this morning is number 63. You all know the hymn. It's a great old hymn. To God be the glory, great things he has done. <coughs> Thank you. 
the book of Exodus. We're going to be thinking this morning about the Exodus. In fact, we're going to be talking about two Exoduses. The Exodus theme in the Bible, but it begins here, as you realise, in this first Exodus. We're starting from chapter 14 and verse 5. Let's hear the word of God. Oh, by the way, I should give you a little context in case your mind has forgotten what happened here. Do you remember that after the ten plagues upon Egypt, God actually finished up forcing the Pharaoh to let his people go. He forced Pharaoh to give them up so they could escape. And the text now picks up that point. Pharaoh did let them go, and they're on their way out of Egypt, but then the Pharaoh changed his mind, and this is where the Bible reading comes in. Verse 5 of Exodus 14. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots, along with all the other chariots in Egypt, and all their officers with them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites, who were marching out boldly. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea in the... Now, this next couple of words is a bit easier to read from the original Hebrew than it is in English. As they camped by the sea near Pihakiroth, opposite baal Jephon. As Pharaoh came near, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord... They said to Moses, and you've always got to find someone to blame, so Moses is going to cop it here. Was it because there, was no, there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians and to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army through his chariots and his horsemen. The Egyptians will then know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of the Lord, who had been travelling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved in front, from in front and stood behind them coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near the other all night long. In other words, the darkness and the light were in different places. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and a wall on their left. The Egyptians pursued them 
and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so the waters may flow back again over the Egyptians and their chariots and their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it and the Lord swept them into the sea. The waters flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and a wall on their left. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. An incredible passage, was, uh, so rich with teaching. We'll focus on one part of it this morning. I hope it's encouraging to you. Um, so God may bless his word to us. Let me just lead you for a moment in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you that we are in fact able to gather together with our like-minded friends so that we can worship you as our holy God. We acknowledge you as the creator and sustainer of this universe. We heartily agree that you are worthy of all praise from all people. We humbly confess our sin, Lord, and we, and we acknowledge our rebellion. By nature, we always were guilty children, children of Adam. Like all the rest, we were, as according to your word, we were against the Lord and his anointed. But in your amazing grace, you changed us. You made us new creatures by your Holy Spirit. So we thank you for the gift of faith, which play, replaces our sinful unbelief. Thank you for sending the Lord Jesus who paid the price for our sin. Lord, may we never underestimate the magnitude of our blessings as your people. Help us rejoice with the Apostle Paul. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Yes, Lord, we do long to see many more people come to love and serve you. So we ask that you would use us in the extension of your kingdom. So that even in the little events of our daily lives, may we all bear faithful witness to you as we engage with people. And may you use those events according to your great power. As we think about the great mercy shown to your people in the Exodus that we've just read about, the Exodus through the Red Sea, help us to understand its connection to Christ. Help us to understand how it points to Christ. Help us to see the greater Exodus that Jesus accomplished. The Exodus from a far worse enemy than Pharaoh and from a far worse bondage than 400 years in Egypt because he accomplished exodus from slavery to sin. Lord, remind us of our Lord's assurance. I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. We bring before you, Lord, any who might be very unwell or who are struggling all sorts of troubles and difficulties. Please strengthen them and bless those who care for them and help us wherever we can to give genuine encouragement. As we now continue in this hour of worship, our biggest desire is you would be honoured 
And may we be made wiser and stronger as the Holy Spirit applies your word to our hearts and minds. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, we're going to take a moment now just to contribute our free will gifts to the building of God's kingdom. Um, let's just do that together. Thank you. 